So, welcome to Shizzy's Cooking Class. If you don't know who Shizzy is, you, to be honest, have probably been living under a rock. But chances are, if you can connect to the internet and are even remotely interested in fitness, you've definitely seen this guy on your feed, either on Instagram or TikTok. It seems like his social media presence really took off last year, and his success is really, I mean, no surprise at all. He really does check all the boxes for someone who could and should be an influencer. He's 230 pounds at six foot four, claiming natural. So there's your controversy. He's your real life doppelganger of Jack Hanma, which really works works in his favor given how many bodybuilders love Baki. And we really can't forget the one moment that shined the stage lights right on Shizzy, igniting his career. Shizzy getting stabbed in the chest and then training chest the very next day. <laughs> People are like, yo, did Shizzy really hit chest day after getting stabbed in the chest? Yes. And the short answer to that is it was chest day. I mean, do I need to say more? I love chest day. I love chest pumps. Now, I'm not going to be spending this whole video going natty or not and doing that whole boring thing because it should be pretty fucking obvious. In my opinion, he's not. I mean, being honest, six foot four, 230 pounds lean is not going to happen naturally. Take it from a guy who's six foot two, 245 pounds on a more gear than many people, it's not going to happen naturally. Again, I've won my natural pro card. Like, I competed naturally first, won the pro card there. Realistically, everyone I was competing against, and I at the time was 180 pounds at six foot two, was lighter than me by 10 to 20 pounds. So, and these were the best of the best, right? So I, I was a little bit fishy, right? I always think about this when I'm like, man, I won my natural pro card. And these people, if they're real and not faking it, like they could be the best in the world. So why aren't they? But what I do want to talk about today, amongst the other things, we'll get into is how he has single-handedly destroyed the younger lifting community. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's exactly what I mean. Now, personally, if I was one of these old dudes in the back, I'd think these kids need to be sent to a mental asylum. I mean, just put it bluntly, it's not quote unquote cool. It definitely doesn't imply you're training harder. And overall, it just really fucking is a weird trend to begin with. I mean, I get it to to an extent, at least maybe I don't get it. You see this guy on social media looking really intimidating and the whole tough guy act is making you feel like you want to be like that as well. But that's the thing. I'm sure from Shizzy's perspective, he is actually acting and it can't be hard to assume either because given the whole bit I was mentioning about earlier, he essentially is a anime character with the berserk tattoo and all. And from what I understand, this whole trend kicked off due to the whole stabbing incident because as we can see here, he does the same throat slitting motion in response to getting attacked. And from Shizzy's perspective, it does seem like he fought back. It implies that he definitely was fighting against the stabber. TNF sort of confirmed this. So I reached out to him to make sure he was okay, of course. And this was his response to me. So I asked the next, you know, logical question. And this was his response. And it gave him something to be recognized for. It kind of made him a martyr, sort of like Donald Trump getting uh, his recent assassination attempt times two. But as many have pointed out, Shizzy did not get stabbed for this. And it seems to be kind of a new phrase within his comment sections, basically suggesting this is a mockery of his experience and outright embarrassing, which is my exact point. I mean, if you take the time to listen to the guy outside of these random TikTok edits and his weird behaviors, he's actually a pretty respectable dude. 
dude. I mean, people just assume the worst because we've got guys like Toji who blew up the fitness industry for acting like a lunatic, and in his case, that's exactly how his personality actually is. On the other hand, there's a lot of dudes who also represent the tough guy act on social media, but in reality, they don't actually carry those traits in real life at all. So I can understand assuming that his whole personality is essentially that of an anime character, but from what I've seen, Shizzy's actually a really genuine ass guy. What I'm learning is it's okay to be alone, to stick to, with yourself, you know, in a crowd full of people, like, because yours worth, your time is worth so much more than just like a cheap conversation or a cheap, you know, like someone's like, yo, let's go out. And you're like, yeah, sure, let's go. But you don't want to go out. Your time, your peace is worth so much more than that, dude. And just finding those people that will respect your wishes and your thoughts is just so much so, so great. Just hearing this, it's without my question that this guy's had a hard time coming up. Like I was, I grew up in a family of six. So I have five brothers and sisters. Yeah. Uh, my dad was never there, dude. He was an alcoholic. That's basically like the moral of the story is like my dad wasn't there. My mom was trying her best to, you know, um, so like support us, you know, my dad was like, a, you know, a pretty cool dude as far as I remember, but I just know that he would get like super violent sometimes. And I have like memories of him like beating my sisters. Like he never would touch us Holy kids, shit. like boys, like he would spank us, but he was so violent to my sisters and my mom, like women in general, it was terrible. My sister, because of the abuse between her and my dad ended up like, like sexually like abusing me when I was like, you know, like before, I don't even know exactly how old I was, but I wasn't in second grade yet. And I remember like, like being so scared because it was my fault. Like she would like say, oh, you gotta do it again because it, you know, tell him like, you, it's your fault. Steve said that best a little while ago, while these things suck, it unquestionably builds character. If you were to build a successful and productive person, what would you put them through? Successful and productive? Yeah. Misery and hardship. You need to go through hell, man. I know. Have your parents divorced? Of course, you can't ask them of that. War, friends dying, Fred stabbing you in the back. That builds character. And you'll never get tested as much as through those situations. So, most of the people who live through that, they don't complain. They just put their head down and put shit to work. Of course, we don't really talk about that shit, but it stays with you. But once you go through hell, you just never want to feel like that again. You don't want to feel broke again. You want to feel heartbroken again. You don't want to feel that pain again. And if you want to be successful, you just six and a half days a week is fucking easy. And I see it with people who've never had hardships. They just complain about everything. And you stay the fuck clear, you know? Because yeah. imagine when life gets tough, then they really complain. I didn't complain with my parents divorced. I made it work, man. I was 15. Not to, not to turn it into a sob story, but you just you gotta step up and man up real fast, you know, when shit like that happens. And then once you persevere through it, just shut the fuck up about it. And of course, I don't wish these things on people at all, but when people see this guy's demeanor and they think, wow, he's so cool, I want to be like him, I don't think they comprehend that it actually takes a lot to be like him, to end up like that. So instead of trying to make themselves better, you just get a bunch of teens pretending to have this bloodlust and then stoic personality, when really they just look like a bunch of assholes and lunatics. Now, I'm, I'm on a bit of a tangent here, but I really do think that this kind of behavior embraces the whole fighting your demons in the gym, bro. And I don't mean to be a dick, but look, if you need to conjure up rage and murderous intent just to do a set of leg curls, that's kind of fucking wild, bro. There's something wrong with you. <clears throat> like all I feel is rage and frustration. And just to be clear, there's nothing wrong with going to the gym for your mental health. I think it's a beautiful thing. But if you think that you need to get angry in spite of some situations or sad all of the time just to train, there's probably something greater to address with your situation. Like, hey, a psychologist, even though I don't really believe in them, could probably be a, a right call for you. But on top of that, like I mentioned, a handful, more than a handful of followers, are getting this tattoo just because Shizzy's got one and not realizing the association with the main character Berserk in the anime Berserk, which is my favorite ever in the world. I'll always cherish that for the rest of my life, the manga and anime. I own every single chapter and book, even the new ones. Rest in peace, my brother. But the reason that Shizzy got this is because he had a fucked up childhood just like Guts did. And they don't even understand why there is symbolism behind this tattoo. I mean, most of them don't even understand the Berserk anime at all, or manga at large. And obviously, I'm all for getting ink, dude. I'm fucking jazzed up here. But the thing is, you have to understand why you're getting something before you get it. I understand the, the actual interpretation of what that's going to be, not just getting it because you want to seem tough like one of your favorite TikTok influencers. 
end up like the next American getting Chinese tattooed on his arm saying the words pig. When Westerners get Chinese tattoo, a netizen saw a hot girl in Barcelona. Unfortunately, her back tattoo shizi means lice. Another netizen ran into this guy in Germany. His tattoo means pig. Is pig a lucky animal in Western cultures? Because this guy has the same tattoo. This lady's tattoo, go, means dog. Most netizens guess the character just represent their zodiac animal. But one said, I hope they're not a couple because in Chinese, there's a saying, zhu go bu ru, literally worse than pigs and dogs which refers to a person whose morality is lower than low. This guy's tattoo literally translates to mother, forever, pig, laugh. If this is a tattoo dedicated to your mom, at least try to make a coherent sentence. Perhaps Westerners think one big Chinese character looks cool. This guy has ghost tattoo on his arm. This guy has death tattoo on his neck. And this guy has a big fat poop on his chest. This guy's tattoo, Beijing Kaoya, means Beijing roast duck. Netizen said he must know what this means because there's a rubber duck underneath the character, ya. This girl's tattoo, ni ta ma de, means fuck you. Every time she wears a camisole, it's like giving the world a middle finger. Now, despite the bad influence that Shizzy has brought to the younger demographic in the gym, I I think it's clear that none of this was his intent. I don't think he gets the blame for this culture shift because a lot of things and a lot of things have been taken far too far from what he meant it to be. But for those who've actually taken the time to listen to him, understand that he's a very genuine guy and just wants to spread a positive message, which brings me to the main reason that I actually wanted to make this video. See, recently Shizzy competed in his second bodybuilding competition ever, and this competition has caused some huge controversy and definitely made me second guess Shizzy's personality, and here's why. Originally, Shizzy placed third in this show, and it makes total sense. He's obviously very genetically gifted, but the dude wasn't lean at all. Like, he barely did a cut, it seems like. Especially when we compare this to his first show, where it looks like he was definitely way more peeled. And according to Greg, the guy only dieted for a single week, and so obviously you can't expect the staged ready physique to be there. I doubt he even tried to peak. <laughs> but the craziest thing, despite this, after after the competition was over, the host, Tom Platts, decided that he deserved to win. And obviously, this fucks over the guy who already had first place, celebrated overnight with the family, take pictures with the first place trophy, all of that. And trust me, if this was some sort of mistake, I'm sure it would have been cleared up relatively easy. But when you go back and try to block a person who's trying to expose you, you definitely have some things to hide. Imagine winning first place at a bodybuilding show, and then the promoter, this guy, the next day calls you up and says, hey, by the way, we made a mistake. And then they give it to a third place winner who just has a massive social media following. How would you feel? Six packs, welcome to the show. So this is Saeb Fashi. He owns Six Packs Gym in Culver City. Here's their Instagram. He blocked me because I asked too many questions. This guy, Brian, recently won his class at their show for $1,000 and he won their overall Mr. Six Packs award for $1,500. The next day, the owner of Six Pack called him and said, hey, you gotta give the trophy back and you gotta give the check back. We made a mistake. Now, despite us having photos of every single judge that picked this guy as the winner, in photos with the guy celebrating the victory after they made the decision, and them writing his name on the check and handing him the award in front of everybody, they called him up the next day and gave it to Shizzy, who had got third place. Here's Shizzy being awarded third place. Now, I truly don't think Shizzy had anything to do with this. I think that the promoter saw an opportunity to get better exposure by fucking this guy and giving it to this guy. And what does Shizzy know? If they said, hey, we miscounted, that's what happened. Are you going to say no? And I actually asked the promoter about it. He said, no, the guy won his class, but not the Mr. Sixpack title. To which I sent him this photo of the guy holding the check for the Mr. Sixpack title. To which he said, fuck you and your videos and blocked me. Nice guy, go check out his book on Amazon. If it was really just a scorecard issue, then it shouldn't be a problem to just publicly display the scorecards from the show. But this guy is clearly trying to cover some things up. And Tom Platts made it pretty clear that there was never an issue with the scorecards, they just simply changed their mind, which I've literally never heard about in bodybuilding history. I believe I made a mistake yesterday when I was collecting the score from judges. And after talking to Mr. Tom, he has a different opinion about the winners. We have clarification in our minds and our hearts. Who should should represent the winners of Mr. and Miss Sixpack. We feel very strongly about this. Nothing to diminish the other winners. Buddy, why are you lying? 
Tom Platz gave it up. You're saying it's a scorecard issue. He's saying we changed our minds. Y'all should have got on the same page before you recorded this video, but what you did to that kid is total bullshit and you should give him the check back. Now, I don't think Shizzy's personality had anything to do with this certain situation, but I do think it's wrong of him to just take this title and try to be such a good and genuine person without realizing the fact that he kind of got this title unfairly. Because if we look at the original winner of the show, yes, it's a bit hard to see because they're relying on the fucking sunlight for a bodybuilding show, which what the fuck, but he clearly had better conditioning and overall better shape. And so after all of this, he even said here in one comment on his post that they're not going to get the belt and checks back anyway. This is the first time we've definitely seen something like this. I know I said I haven't seen it before, but that's because it was way before my time and I thought we were well more established than that now, but I guess not. In 1980, we saw the biggest controversy in bodybuilding. Arnold returned after a five-year break just to win the Olympia with one of his worst looks to date. In that instance, Arnold was actually a promoter of the show and was even in the middle of creating a documentary literally titled The Comeback. And so obviously a lot of people, both competitors and spectators, thought it would be totally rigged. Obviously, there's a handful of shows where some will certainly say that a competitor was robbed or even ripped of their rightful crown, like Kevin Lavroni, for example. But nothing has seemed to be an outright rigged situation like that Olympia or this recent shizzy situation. So my question is, what did Tom Platz and this gym owner really expect to happen from changing the results? All they really earned themselves was a terrible reputation for pulling the stunt. And even Tom Platz, who is considered one of the greats, really tainted his name over this whole debacle. Shizzy obviously didn't need to win. He has a huge platform and makes a full-time living just from posting a couple TikToks a week. But what this stunt did accomplish was significantly boosting up the original winner's career. Thanks to Goob's coverage of this whole incident, they got the guy a sponsorship with First Form, which seems to be a very successful supplement company, and I hope he's making good money. And between the time he made his video on the subject and the one I'm making now, his following has nearly doubled. So I guess it goes to show that the world has a way of giving you what you deserve. I don't honestly think that Shizzy went to that competition with poor intentions, but honestly, for the guy's sake, I'm happy that things turned out the way they did because we're all probably well aware. Unless you're building a whole career with bodybuilding, getting sponsored sponsorships, social media, doing coaching, etc, etc, competing at large is just going to drain your wallet dry. Far more than the tiny check that you might win at a show, even those competing at the Olympia stage. I think it's often forgotten that Chris only wins $50,000. Chris Bumstead only wins $50,000 when he competes and successfully is the best bodybuilder in the world. But if you want to look your best in the world and not comparing yourself to, of course, the genetically elite, I, I don't think, you know, one in 300 of us might look like Chris Bumstead. I'm not that one. You might be that one. Hey, and if you are, bro, hit me up later on. Uh, but we have a Discord group. <laughs> I highly suggest that you check it out. It is exclusive, and there are three tiers, which are paid tiers. I'll be completely transparent, but they support this channel, and the resources that we do have in there are coaches who are experts in their career, as well as many resources that you might need as a bodybuilder or a fitness influencer trying to come up within the industry. But in the last and final sentence of what I have to say, I think Shizzy's a great guy, but the whole concept of him doing the whole throat slitting thing and all that other weird shit that he was doing at the gym trying to be like the bad guy it really embraced a movement to now people wearing masks in the gym posing doing really weird things trying to be hardcore with the brazilian funk in the background and i think it's very clear to say that if anyone was witnessing this from the outside looking in let's just say you're in the background as one of these dudes is recording the video it is almost entirely too awkward to look at <laughs> But hey, it activates that little algorithm and so be it, you know, it just gets people happy or something. Subscribe to the channel if you like this video. I will see you in the next one. Deuces.